What's happening, musician friends? Matt Vanacoro here with my friends at Gig Performer, and I'm ready to dive into the first 10 minutes of Gig Performer 4, the newest, the latest, the greatest update. This live hosting software is going to let you make some really incredible music, and if you really dig it, make sure you like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos that we've got where we take a deeper dive into those newer features of Gig Performer 4. So when you've got Gig Performer 4, you've downloaded it, you're ready to set up, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure your audio interface is configured and your MIDI inputs are configured. You want to make sure that whatever keyboard you're going to use, it's detected, and also whatever sound card and everything you've got hooked up to your monitors is working as well. So I'm going to go to Options and I'm going to go to that audio setup. And from there, you can see my output device is selected. Audio, Universal Audio Thunderbolt, that's what I'm using right now. Uh, you could use the built-in speakers on your computer. You could use the headphone jack, whatever. You're just going to choose it from there. And you're also going to make sure that under MIDI ports, you've got MIDI input selected for whatever MIDI device you've got plugged in. So you see, I've got a couple. I've got my Complete Control. I've got my Keylab 88. I've got a lot of different keyboards I can use. So you just want to make sure that they're selected so that Gig Performer is actually getting the MIDI from that device. So as long as you got MIDI, as long as you got your sound card, your audio device set up, you are good to go. So here we go. Now, if you look at this front, I'm in the panel view right now, and it's pretty blank. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set up Gig Performer so that when I am playing notes out of my keyboard, you'll hear some sound from a virtual instrument. And you can do this with me. You don't have to have the same virtual instrument. I'm just going to use some generic sounds. So I'm going to go to the wiring spot right here. Okay, the wiring page is where I'm going to be able to take a VST or an AU instrument, a virtual instrument. I'm going to connect a MIDI device to it and then connect that virtual instrument to the audio output so that when I play, I hear it. Okay, so let's do it. It's pretty easy. First thing I'm going to do is set up a MIDI input. So I'll right click here and I'm going to go to MIDI inputs. And I'm actually going to use Omni. This is great. And generally, if I'm not doing a complicated setup, Omni just means it's going to take any MIDI it gets from this keyboard in front of me, from the second keyboard I got on the side, any MIDI it's going to use. And that's probably the easiest for me for now. So I set that up. I've got a little window if I want to configure stuff, but I'm just going to close it for now. So there's my MIDI Omni. Okay, that's my keyboard. When I play notes on the keyboard, they're going to go from there. Now, the next thing I'm going to set up is a VST or an AU instrument, some kind of instrument so that it's a virtual instrument and making sound, just like I was doing it in a DAW or something like that. So I'll right click. And I've got a lot of choices here, don't I? I'm going to go ahead and go to Arturia and I'm just going to pick a piano and I think you should too. So just pick any piano instrument you've got. Okay. And I've set it up. There it is. You'll see the interface that I'm used to. There's that piano. I'll close it. I'm not even going to pick a preset. I'm going to use whatever piano, the American Grand. It's set up. It's good to go. So now all I have to do is connect my keyboard right here, the output from that MIDI to the input of the virtual instrument. And now that virtual instrument has two outputs, you know, left and right, two channels. It's a nice little stereo output. So I'll take the first one and I'm going to connect it right there to audio out one. And I'm going to take the second one and connect it right there to audio out two. There's a cool way to do both of them at the same time later on. I'll show you that a little later. But right now that's it. I'm done. If I play some notes. I've got my piano and everything works. I'm all set. So now what I can do if I want to, I can rename that rack space. This is called a rack space. All right. I'll rename the rack space and I can do that by just double clicking and I'll call that piano. That's my piano sound. Now let's say the next piece of the show, the next song I'm doing needs some strings. So I want to make a new rack space. So I'll click on the plus sign and I'll hit new rack space. And this one's going to be strings. Okay. So now I got strings. And look at that. It's got a MIDI Omni ready to go already. So I'm ready to go there. All I need to do now is call up a string sound. So let me see. I'll right click and I will go ahead and I'll go into Arturia. And let's see if they've got anything that looks uh, good for strings. Hmm. I don't really see anything. This is a lot of synths. But that's okay because I can mix companies. I can use whatever I want. That's really cool. So I'll go ahead and go into Native Instruments and I'll bring up the old standby, right? Contact. A lot of people use contact, and I'm sure it'll have some great string sounds. So I'm right there. I'll scroll down, and I'll look for my studio strings. I love that one. So there you go. Session Strings Pro. All right, we'll go with a modern ensemble. Calls it up. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll connect the MIDI input, the output of that MIDI device, to my contact. And now this time, to save a little time, I'm going to hold down the shift key. When I click and drag that first audio output, watch this. Like magic, bam, 
stereo already hooked up and already connected. So now I've got some strings. Awesome, everything is working exactly the way I like. I've got piano, I've got strings, and look how quick I can change. I can be in piano, and I can just hit the down arrow there, and go to the next one. Of course, I can even program things like a pedal or a button on my MIDI controller to switch to the next one as well. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is if I go to the panels, hmm, those panels are still pretty blank. And I'm thinking that if I'm in a Broadway pit or something, I'm programming a musical, um, I'm not really going to want to like change the parameters of the sound while I'm in the middle of the show, but I sure would love to not have to put my reading glasses on to take a look at that tiny little rack space list. So this is a great opportunity for me to put in very large text, you know, exactly what sound this is. So I can go ahead and go to edit and I'm just going to get a text label and I'm going to drag it and drop it in there. Okay. And right there I can customize the caption. So let's see. Ooh, I already forgot which one am I working on right now? I'm working on the piano. All right, I'll go back to edit mode. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go ahead and relabel this and call it piano. There we go. Hmm, still a little small. Well, that's okay. I got my font size down here. I click and move it up and let's make that really, really big. In fact, I can make it huge. So that's going to be my piano. All right, nice big font size, 128. Easy to see. And Let's do the same thing for my strings. All right, I'll go to the edit page and I'm gonna go ahead and this time, you know, just to be cool, let's try a different label. I'm gonna use a tape label. Look at that, you can make it look old school, just like you were taping across your mixer, right? You know, we used to label our mixer channels like that with actual tape. Uh, if you know that, you're as, as old as me or older. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this one strings. All right, same thing, I can go to the font size, make it really large, and look at that. Easy to see. I've got my piano, I've got my strings, and I can choose which one I want to, you know, what label I want for consistency. Uh, the OCD in me is like freaking out right now that I'm using a tape label and a text label on one and the other. All right. So now the next thing I want to do is I would love it if I could make a piano and strings patch. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this rack space. All right. So this one, I've got another strings. And I'm going to go ahead and double click and rename this one piano and strings. Even though it's not quite piano and strings yet. I'm lying right now. But I'm going to make myself tell the truth in a second. I'm going to switch over to the wiring diagram. And you can do the same. So now you've got your strings set up, right? That's okay. I'll move them over here. I want to add my piano into here. And guess what? I can. It's really easy. I'll right click. And I'm going to go ahead and go into Arturia and pick out that piano. So I pop my piano in, just like I did with the first instrument, and I'll put it right here. Now guess what? You can connect multiple MIDI outputs to different instruments. So now I've got this MIDI controller is sending out to the strings and sending out to the piano. And I can also send the piano over here and connect it. So now, piano and strings. I've made uh, myself a truth teller once again. All right, of course I'd go to the front rack and I would rename this and I would say piano and strings. There we go. So now this patch is piano and strings. And wouldn't it be cool, you know, I'm sure with this kind of patch, I might wanna tweak it per song. I don't know if I wanna leave that volume control forever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a couple knobs in there. I'll drop a blue knob and I'll drop a green knob. Let's use two different, wildly different colors, right? makes sense. So now I've got these two different colors. I'm going to go ahead and align them. So let's just align the top of them so that they line up with each other. You can do that anytime you select multiple things. So I hold shift and click them and I align it. So go ahead and drop some knobs in. They don't do anything yet, but we're going to make them do something soon. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead. I want to adjust the volume independently of these instruments. So I can click on this instrument and I'll go ahead and assign it to a plugin. So I just got this knob selected here, right? And what I'm going to do is right now it's not assigned to anything, but I can quickly go ahead and say, okay, this is going to be assigned to the piano plugin. Now there's a lot of parameters here. Wow. I have to search this all the way through just to find the master volume. Well, not necessarily. I, I mean, I could scroll down and it, it would take a long time, but I've got a search field down here. So I'll just hit volume and see, oh, look, master volume. Great. So now if I go to the front panel, this actually controls the volume of the piano. You can hear the piano getting 
louder and softer as I change it. So you can quickly map it. And I could do the same thing with the other knob if I wanted to. So I go to the edit and I click that and I can go ahead and assign that to contact and do the master volume there. But I'm not even finished. I'm going to give you a little bonus. I know we might go a little past 10 minutes, but bonus round for you. So what if I want this knob and I want to be able to control it with a physical knob from my MIDI controller? I don't want to reach over, grab my mouse in the middle of a show. You don't have to. I can go to the MIDI tab right here and see there's a MIDI assignment. It says no MIDI assignment yet, but I can hit learn. I tap learn, I click it, and now I just move the knob on my MIDI controller that I want to control it. And that's it. I'm done. I'm moving a physical knob on my MIDI controller. You see, I'm not touching the mouse and it's just controlling the volume of that piano. So I'll click learn again and now I'm done. So now in my panel, as I play, I can bring that piano up and down without having to take my hands off the keyboard. And that's it. That's the first 10 minutes. You can set up different sounds. You can go ahead and combine sounds. You can get really involved and even set up virtual mixers to mix lots of sounds and come up with complex routing, complex effects. The sky's the limit with Gig Performer 4, and we're all really excited to see what you're going to do with it.